Cameron here, registered physiotherapist. Today I'd like to talk to you about the importance of pelvic position and how it can influence the lower back. But before I begin, uh, please hit the subscribe button below so you can be notified about any additional videos uh, that come on my channel here. So essentially the pelvis, uh, it's important in terms of how we hold our body. It's important in terms of stability and it's important in terms of how our lower back uh, is positioned. So essentially with the pelvis, there's uh, three different positions that the pelvis can go into. One is referred to as an anterior pelvic tilt. Another one is a posterior pelvic tilt. And then finally, it, it would be a position considered more or less neutral between a posterior and an anterior pelvic tilt. So the reason this is so important is because it can influence uh, inter uh, our, our back position, it can influence what muscles might be involved in terms of movement, and it can also influence the different muscles that um, contribute in terms of the stability of the pelvis and in turn the back. So I'm just gonna demonstrate from the side here. Um, so with an anterior tilt position, essentially our pelvis is going to be pulled forward and in this position here our lower back goes into what's referred to as a hyperlordotic curve so essentially your lower back is in a lot of extension this position is not ideal for the lower back and the reason for that is there's a tendency to overuse uh, some of our lower back muscles in terms of the paraspinal muscles in a lot of cases, people that sort of fall into this anterior position, um, there'll be a lot of compression through the lower back area. Uh, and also, uh, there's a tendency to overuse a lot of the muscles in the front of the pelvis. So our hip flexors, our quads. And in a lot of cases, uh, this anterior position is a result of one, overuse, as I mentioned, of, this, of the psoas, the hip flexor, the quads, overuse of uh, the paraspinal muscles in the lower back, and underuse, in a lot of cases, of the glute med muscle. And the glute med muscle, it's a, it's a primary muscle for pelvic stability. And so when that is weak, well, we're going to over rely, so to speak, on these other muscles that we've, uh, we've talked about. Another position that's fairly uh, common that you'll see with people is what's referred to as a posterior pelvic tilt. In this position, the pelvis is uh, very much out over top of the lower back, and the lower back will be in, in a very sort of uh, flattened type position. Um, you'll see this, again, a lot with individuals uh, that might have tightness in the hamstrings, that might be weak in terms of abdominal pelvic floor strength. Um, again, people will have sort of this flat back. So in a lot of cases, there'll be a lack of flexibility in through uh, lower back extension. So uh, in a lot of cases, I find there's a lot of rigidity around the hip area. So tightness in the, the piriformis muscles in a lot of cases, uh, there'll be a lot of tightness again in through the paraspinal muscles. And so, again, with this either anterior or posterior biased position of the pelvis, the lower back is going to have to work overtime. So there's going to be certain muscles that, uh, again, are going to be weak. There's going to be certain muscles that are having to guard to maintain this position. And there's going to be muscles that are going to be working overtime uh, because of the impact of gravity on the pelvis on the lower back. And so, again, what we're looking for in terms of a, a proper pelvic position is more of a neutral position in through the back. Uh, and so with this, uh, what, it, what will occur is we're not going to have a flat or hyperlordotic curve. We're going to have a nice, uh, just general S-shaped curve in through the lower back. There's going to be a lot of stability within the pelvis, so there's going to be uh, strength within the glute muscles, strength in the pelvic floor, strength in the abdominal areas. When somebody is standing, um, they'll, typically the individual will stand with um, uh, a lot of flexibility in through the knees, with a slight bend in the knees, 
And again, that pelvis is not going to be exaggerated one side or the other. And quite frankly, it's the most efficient position to be in to minimize overuse uh, in these different muscles that we've talked about and to reduce the impact through the lower back position. I found with a lot of individuals who have sort of persistent lower back or chronic lower back pain, if we look at these different muscle imbalances that are contributing to how the pelvis is being held, just by um, noticing these different changes and working on strengthening muscles that are weak and lengthening muscles that are being overused and, and putting that pelvis in, again, more of a neutral position, all of a sudden the back, that back pain, that back tension, that back guarding starts to reduce and people uh, have a reduction typically in back pain and an improvement in their general uh, flexibility. If you have any specific questions or concerns, feel free to leave a comment below. And thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care.